Thank you for uh, watching this video. Uh, it's going to be about a 20 minute video uh, to cover the next steps in the mapping process from the FAU to the COA. Um, I, my name is Chris Bronston. I am the chart of accounts lead on the Assign, uh, Ascend 2.0 project. I'm joined today by my co-lead, Taryn Carruthers. Um, we will be navigating through uh, what the road ahead looks like over the months of March and April and going into May as we take a look at uh, the tools as well as the role and support that you will have uh, in this endeavor. Thank you so much, Chris, for that introduction. And I look forward to talking with each of you through this particular video. We have five major items that we're really going to be reviewing today. Um, the first is to talk about the Ascend 2.0 program timeline, which we really haven't talked about before. We're gonna talk about the FAU to COA timeline. Then we're gonna talk about mapping experts, mapping buddies, and then even give a preview of the mapping tools. So let's start off with the Ascend 2.0 program timeline, which is actually a very important context and maybe one we haven't spent as much time talking about. If you look at the upper left-hand part of the screen, you'll see the gold area, which is really the chart of accounts work. Now, this timeline overall has not changed as we've begun the Ascend 2.0 program. And we, as the Chart of Accounts team, have always been held responsible for a May 5th deadline to have the values created and mapping completed. And so this fits into all of this overall timeline and context. So, Chris, I'm curious. How does this timeline and completing the chart of accounts by May 5th really help us achieve that common goal of having a good chart of accounts for UCLA's future? Yes, it's, a, it's an excellent question, Taryn. Uh, one of the things that we have consistently heard over the last several months in working with many stakeholders across campus is the desire to have a very strong chart of accounts uh, for the future of UCLA. That is most definitely a shared goal that we have with that project. Having our initial FAU to COA mapping complete by May 5th um, helps support that goal in two important ways. First of all, it allows us to subject the results of that to the maximum amount of testing and scrutiny. Uh, as you can see in this, there's multiple uh, data conversions, testing uh, sprints, and so forth. So by having this uh, FAU to COA mapping completed initially, uh, it allows us to put it through the full uh, cycle of testing throughout the project. Secondarily, uh, and very importantly, by completing this by May 5th, it allows us to have the maximum reflection period. It will allow us to work with the schools uh, and other organizations to identify standardization opportunities and other improvements which may make uh, some of the approaches to our chart of accounts uh, much better uh, and more standardized across all units. Thank you so much, Chris. That's very good insight when we look at this context. Now, if we look at the next more detailed timeline for the FAU to COA, mapping. I'm not going to highlight everything here, but this was really a changed approach and based on feedback. And I'm going to ask you about that in a little bit, Chris. But what we see here is on the fourth line, these are going to be the big things, I think, for the audience, is we have conduct value mapping for the financial unit. That will take place the week of March 6th, March 13th, and March 20th. Then if you drop down further to the eighth item on here, there's the conduct mapping expert training, which originally was planned for March 6th, but is now scheduled for the week of March 27th. And then the very next item below that is conduct value mapping in the online tool, which will take place April 3rd, the week of April 3rd, the week of April 10th, and the week of April 17th, with also the item following it, which is some re central review within each individual organization. So here's my question for you, Chris. 
How does this plan incorporate the various feedback you've been hearing from end users around this work? Yes, thank you for that question, Taryn. This uh, uh, new revised timeline that still gets us to the May 5th goal of having all FAUs initially mapped to the new COA uh, reflects feedback and support of our end users in three important ways. Um, the first of all is we have pushed out the deadline uh, to gather the values for the program portfolio flex and activity uh, segments for a couple of weeks. We do ask to have your uh, initial draft of those into us by the end of this week, uh, February, uh, the week here of February 27th, so due on March uh, 3rd. Um, secondarily, we heard a desire to do some mapping of the financial unit up front, uh, and you'll hear more about this later, but we have bifurcated some of the work that would have otherwise happened in the tool around financial unit. Uh, we will be providing um, the accounts and cost centers with your financial units, and you'll be able to work on that over the next uh, several weeks in March, and that will be loaded into the tool. And thirdly, we have pushed out the time to actually do the mapping within the online tool itself till April. Um, so in those three ways, uh, we have tried to accommodate the, the needs and, and requests of the end users on campus who will be doing this work with us. Thank you so much, Chris. It's nice to see that as we've been moving through, even though that May 5th date hasn't changed, we've really adjusted the timeline to provide as much time as we can to those end users. So now as we look at the mapping expert, the mapping expert really has four major components here. First of all, the financial leaders in the first bucket um, may choose to have their mapping experts complete the financial unit value mapping. That's some of the adjustment that we've made. And while some areas might choose to have their mapping expert do that, maybe some organizations choose to do it more centrally. That's really up to them. But then the mapping experts will attend that Zoom training that week of um, March 27th. And then from there, um, we will open up and have them have access to the online mapping tool which will allow them to um, start mapping that FAU to the COA. And all along the way, they're gonna have a mapping buddy to really help them every step of the way. So I'm curious, Chris, I know at times we've talked about maybe having 300 or so mapping experts, and that might seem like a lot to people. What are the benefits of suggesting a lot of mapping experts across the organization. Yes, um, I see a couple different benefits to having a relatively large number of mapping experts here at UCLA uh, for this FAU to COA mapping process. The first of which is we have 1.9 million unique combinations of the FAU to map to the new uh, chart of accounts. Therefore, there's a lot of work to do. So spreading that work out across uh, a number of, of, of people, you know, reduces the work for each individual person. As my mother likes to say, many hands make light work. Um, secondarily, and very significantly, I see that this mapping exercise really is an initial training for the new chart of accounts. So by bringing in a number of uh, people from each organization to do this mapping, to look at the FAU, to see how it and, and participate into mapping in the new COA is really the first step in training on the new COA. So as I've talked to uh, financial leaders and others across campus, I'm uh, suggesting that you sort of err on the side of having more mapping experts involved than less really for both of those uh, reasons. That's a great point to look at it as kind of that early training and building up understanding of that new chart of accounts. So now we look at how those experts aren't alone because we really have developed this buddy system. And the main thing I wanna point out about the buddy, the buddies will be reaching out um, to their mapping experts and to the financial um, leaders across the organization at UCLA, but, the big thing that I want to point out is that middle piece, which is the flexible approach. Um, 
What we are really planning to do with the buddies is to understand how we best work with you, how we best support you um, and the way you're planning to work. Maybe that's one-on-one -on -one meetings weekly with the, with the mapping experts. Maybe that's more joint sessions with the various mapping experts of a particular organization. However, we best accommodate and work with how you're planning to work, that's what we want the buddies to do and that's what they will do. Now, we'll put some faces and names to those buddies. We have six buddies out there. And I'm curious, Chris, what do you like about this team that are our mapping buddies and their ability to support the mapping experts and the UCLA organization? Yeah, quite frankly, uh, using the word like may be a bit of a, an understatement. I really love this team. Uh, this We've been working together, uh, the, the folks here on the Chart of Accounts and GL team, for a number of months. Uh, they are. Uh, this group is so talented. Uh, they're so supportive of one another. Uh, they're very, very committed to this project, and they're committed to UCLA. Uh, and I believe that uh, you're each going to have an excellent experience in working with each of these mapping buddies uh, through this process. They bring different skills and talents in terms of data uh, extraction, financial reporting, Oracle uh, background and expertise. Each person has a wealth of knowledge and, and I really think you each will have a, a really great experience uh, in working with your your your. Uh, mapping buddy. And Chris, you and I get to be mapping buddies as well as part of this. That's correct. All right. So now we've gone through the timelines, gone through the experts, gone through the buddy system. Now let's look a little bit about the tools that would be used as part of this process. The first one, which Chris kind of reflected on in how our timeline changed and that came from feedback, from the organization itself is this financial unit mapping tool. And what you will find within this tool, you see some, uh, some screenshots here, but you'll find on the first tab of this Excel workbook, um, you'll find instructions. And then on the second tab, you'll find the current FAU account and cost center. And more importantly than that, the account cost center description and then the ability to actually map to a child level financial unit that was established by your area as part of the value creation for financial unit. And then um, there's also a listing of financial units in the hierarchy on a separate tab, all there for reference. So I'm curious, Chris, as you're working with areas, can you explain how you came up with this design of the template and why you are confident this will help the organization and each part of the organization be successful with this mapping? Yes, um, this process to, to pre-map, for lack of a better word, the accounts and cost centers to the financial units came at the request of some of our end users. Uh, we did go through a process where we vetted it with a number of large organizations, uh, and we actually piloted the effort uh, with a couple of different schools to make sure that it would work the way we thought it would. Uh, we did receive some great feedback from those who piloted the process. We made some changes to our process. Uh, and as we roll this out, um, and, and this will be a primary work uh, or some of the primary work that happens in March, uh, but we believe that this will be an effective way to uh, vet your financial units by looking at your accounts and cost centers and how they map into them. That's wonderful, Chris. Thank you so much. Now mm -hmm. let's take a look at the online mapping tool, which we get to um, in the April timeframe, and the mapping experts will be used to this. We've gotten the various nominations of mapping experts um, and if you still haven't gotten yours in, please get them in as soon as you possibly can, um, because we're setting up the online tool to give these mapping experts access to the departments that they should have access to. And so when they go in, they're going to see a screen just like this, what you see up on your computer screen. And what this will show them is the FAU combinations that have yet to be mapped. 
Um, so they will look at this and they will find, they might select one, two, three, or multiple rows to say, these should be mapped in a similar or consistent way. And when they select those, what will happen is the next screen will pop up to show here is the financial unit, the fund, the account, but more importantly, it will show portfolio, program, flex, and activity, and give them an opportunity to say, where should that FAU um, combination map to for those four particular fields? Now, this online tool and the FAUs may seem like a lot of work. Before you said 1.9 million, that really stuck in my head and has stuck in my head for quite a bit, Chris. Is there anything that reduces the work mapping experts need to do within this tool, Chris? Yes, there's one very uh, significant thing that I'd like to point out here. Um, with respect to our contracts and grants funds, today those are managed directly uh, in the general ledger, in the FAU. In the future state, uh, uh, it will be managed out in a module of Oracle called PPM. Um, using a subledger accounting language called Poet AF. Um, when that posts to the general ledger through and the chart of accounts, uh, it will come in in a much more summarized way than it does today. And therefore, uh, for contracts and grants funds, because we won't be reconciling uh, and managing the award within the general ledger, within the COA, we won't need to post to the flex and activity. We won't be doing that. So for the contracts and grants funds, uh, you will not be posting to flex and activity. So we have a lot of contracts and grants funds. Uh, and so that reduces a lot of the work that we initially thought we would have to do. Um, in addition to that, for those uh, funds, you won't need to post to the portfolio either. Uh, we are working with our ORA team uh, to gather those values centrally. Um, so for the contracts and grants funds, practically speaking, the only uh, value that you will have to map is the program value. In many cases, that may be null or a default. So uh, we believe you'll be able to map, uh, move through the mapping of those contracts and grants funds in summary rather quickly. That's wonderful. It's nice that not only we've improved the timeline a bit, but we're also looking to reduce some of that workload that even needs to be done. Thank you so much, Chris. So I just want to recap, and then I'm going to turn it back to you, Chris, but recap some of the next steps. The Mapping Buddies will be doing some initial outreach and introductions this week and maybe a little bit into next week. But then the financial unit value mapping including the template being sent out for areas, um, will be across those next three weeks, March 6th, March 13th, and March 20th, the weeks of those. Then the virtual training for the mapping experts will happen that week of March 27th. And then the FAU to COA mapping will happen the weeks of April 3rd, April 10th, and April 17th, with some ability um, across an additional week for central approval within the organizations themselves. Do you have any concluding comments you'd like to make, Chris? Yes, I would. Thank you, Taryn. Um, I just want to thank everyone for all the hard work that's already gone into the chart of accounts. Uh, you and I and the rest of the COA and GL team have had the opportunity to talk to so many people over the last several months. Uh, everybody is really using this as an opportunity to make things better. And I truly appreciate that. We do have a lot of work ahead of us over the next couple of months. Uh, we are here to support you. You are important to us and you're important to UCLA and its future. You are doing something that is critical to the future of UCLA and you should be very proud of that. And uh, I am grateful to be able to work with you all and with you, Taryn, on this endeavor for UCLA.